Wouldn't it be good if there was a plan as to what you were going to interview me about? That would be a good plan, but I think we're just going to make it up. Just wing it. All right. It's not really an interview then. It's a impromptu conversation. Right. It's an impromptu conversation about your your work that you used to do on PowerPC. Uh, Blink. Okay. <laughs> No, it wasn't PowerPC, it was 68K. I did work on, well, I've worked on PowerPC as well, so whatever. So tell me about your days of maintaining 68K. Uh, they were horrible. They weren't so horrible. <laughs> um, you were the man. I was certainly one of them. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it prepared me a lot for getting into ARM, actually, because uh, it was an architecture that nobody cared about, that was painfully slow, that everyone kept claiming, oh, well, if you don't emulate it, what's the point? Uh, or cross build or whatever um, and we stubbornly did it natively anyway and made everything work and everyone hated us and it was great and that's what the last like five years of working on arm stuff has been like <laughs> uh, where now it's finally coming into its own and, and the larger developer base actually kind of cares or is starting yeah. to but four or five years ago it was all the same things it was this is really slow I don't want to do anything natively. The cross-building stuff sucks. Um, your emulation story sucks. So I don't want to help you with this because it's awful. And so there was this just a small group of us doing what we were doing and watching as our patches got rejected over and over again, uh, or worse, reverted. <laughs> <laughs> because you'd fix something and someone else two weeks later would find that it conflicted with one of their patches, and so they'd just revert it and not tell you. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, like 68K a decade ago really prepared me for what ARM has been like for the last few years. Because uh, it was all the same things all over again. The only difference, of course, is that ARM has a future, and 68K <laughs> was just a hobby. <laughs> um. So what was, your, what, was your, what was your key takeaway from working on 68K that you, that you, that you take with you in all and colors your entire work on ARM? It's perseverance. <laughs> perseverance, I like that. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all about just hammering your point home, regardless of the fact that nine out of 10 people, it's not that they disagree, it's that they don't care. And you can't make them care, so instead you just have to make them accept it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. And, that, and that's a big problem. I think a lot of people here have. Uh, there's, there's always this idea that you have to make everyone care. You have to get them excited about it or whatever. And the reality is, if no one has the hardware, and if no one's working on it, those guys have no motivation to care. They're not going to care. You just have to show them that this thing is valuable to you. And you have to care enough that they just accept it and hand wave and go, yeah, okay, whatever. Because um, making them actually be passionate about it isn't going to happen unless they have a reason personally. They need to be personally motivated. So what personally motivated you on 68K? <sighs> <laughs> Fair enough. Old hardware lying around that Fair you wanted enough. to do something with. I mean, that was that was the early days of Linux porting, right? Was, yeah. Ten I mean, years ago. X that's what, what, what's the... Is that even... That's... That's even predates the 2.0 transition. Um, yeah, just, it was, it was just... right around there. Um, but but you, gotta, you, you look far enough back, right? And I don't remember who it was that had the talk where they were, oh, it was John. John yeah. Corbett's talk where he was talking about how we transitioned from hobbyists to um, corporate interests and whatnot. And in the x86 world, that happened really, really early. But when you look at the dozens of ports that have happened since then, those were all about just hobbyist interest. You know, for the most part, every once in a while there was a company that had a new chip that they really wanted to make go. Um, and we're seeing that today with uh, ARM64, which is, it's actually really great because we're doing it a whole different way than we've ever done any other port. But before that, it was always just some dude had some piece of hardware that he thought, man, it would be so awesome if Linux ran on my toaster. <laughs> and there was no valid reason to have a Y2K compliant toaster, but you wanted to anyway. And so away we went. And, and I mean, that was basically this, right? I mean, the old Ataris, the old Amigas, honestly, if I look back at it, if I still had an Amiga 4000 Tower, I would probably run Workbench on it. <laughs> because it worked, it did the job, um, but porting Linux to it was fun. Yeah. You know, it, it was something to do. And yeah, there was, 
there was this belief that maybe Freescale would keep making 68K application processors and, they'd, and, and it could actually be useful, and then they didn't. <laughs> um, Those darn business interests. Yeah, how dare again. they? So yeah, speaking well, of business interest, I'm, get, I'm keen to get your insights on this, because one thing that I've, I've been thinking a lot about is it doesn't seem like we're having as much fun as we used to. It comes and goes, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm definitely... I'm, I'm in a no fun slump right now. <laughs> but a few months ago that probably wasn't true, and in a few months it might not be true. Um, but it definitely goes up and down, and I think it's just the danger of your hobby becoming a job. Right, right. Um, there, there was a time, probably early in my days of being paid to work on free software, there was a time where I would work for my 8 to 16 hours, whatever I actually worked for pay. <laughs> And then immediately after work, I would do exactly the same thing as my hobby, and I was motivated and excited to do that. That's not sustainable. Right. You just can't. You can't do your job all day and then do something that looks exactly like your job all night without something breaking. Right. Um, so, you know, the, the, the excitement, the fun factor really comes and goes. I think as you scale off, find some other hobbies, find some other things to do in the evening, then you start getting excited about the crazy things you're doing in your job again, and then your job becomes your hobby for a little while again, and it, it, it cycles in and out. Yeah. So. That's good feedback. That is really good feedback. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Adam. Thanks for chatting. And well, Thank uh, you. We'll see you. We'll see you at all these other events. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we won't see you at any Ah, eh, you don't know that. You don't know. <laughs>